Good morning, and welcome to worship at YZ Community Church. My name is Rustin Comer, and I'm the Minister of Formation at WCC, and we are so glad that you're worshiping with us today. If this is your first time with us, we offer two styles of online worship each Sunday, contemporary at 9 o'clock and traditional at 8 and 1045. You'll find both posted on our website or our YouTube channel after Sunday morning for on-demand viewing. Also, please check our website and watch your email for updates regarding our opening of the building and our comeback plan that will up unfold in the coming months. If you're on our website, you'll see three buttons below this window. First, for visitors, a hello button to let us know that you've joined us and how you'd prefer for us to connect with you. Second, for everyone, a prayer request button. We want to know any specific needs or concerns you may have and how we can help meet you where you are in this moment. And third, a give button. It allows you to support what God is doing through the mission and ministries of Wyzetta Community Church. And if you're joining us on Facebook or viewing after the live event, simply go to wyzettacommunitychurch.org where you'll find all the same options to connect with us digitally. In this morning, we are looking at crossroads the place where our past and our new dreams meet. We've all been there. As we begin worship, think about your personal crossroads. As you light your candle and acknowledge the presence of the Spirit, begin to dream new dreams. Dreams. We all have them. As children, we dreamed of being doctors, astronauts, teachers, firemen, moms, dads. We dreamed of our wedding day, of throwing the winning touchdown, performing in front of thousands. But then something happened. Somewhere in the process of growing up, we quit dreaming. It happens to everyone. Security and safety took the place of risk and adventure. It happens to everyone. But what if God is asking you to dream again? What if your heart's desire were planted there by God himself? And what if it's not for your glory, but for his? Feed the hungry, launch a business, lead a group, give to the needy, Create something beautiful. Pour Jesus into your world. It's not too late. It's never too late. The world is waiting. So stand up. Live bigger. Risk greater, love stronger, fall harder, rise up better, run faster, move forward in spite of your fears, and give yourself permission to dream again. on ahead in my own strength when you're right here Lord I don't want to rush
From something? More specifically, have you ever done something that brought so much brokenness that you had to run away? This is a story for the runaway. This is a story for anyone who thought that getting what they needed depended on them and them alone. This is a story for those who think they can outsmart God. And this is a story for those who believe that God only gives good news to those that do it right. This is the story of Jacob. You might remember that Jacob had a twin brother named Esau. Esau was Jacob's older brother, which meant that he was set to inherit his father's fortune and that he would carry on his family's name. Jacob happened to be his mother's favorite, and Jacob and his mother devised a plan to steal Esau's birthright so that Jacob could receive his father's blessing and fortune. So they made a plan, they made some stew, 
and they took advantage of Jacob's father's declining health, stealing the birthright. And in the process of Jacob getting everything he ever wanted, he lost everything he ever had. Grab for what you think you want by taking advantage of others, and there will be fallout. Steal from those you love, and there will be consequences. Let your greed and entitlement get the best of you, and you're destined to live life on the run. Live life just for yourself, and there will be a reckoning. Our story this morning is from the book of Genesis, and it's one of the seminal stories of how God's promises are kept and how the people of God are formed. We meet Jacob running away from his family, his blessing, and his sin, and by the end of the story, we'll see how God deals with those who go their own way. Hear these words from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 19. Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and camped for the night since the sun had set. He took one of the stones there, set it under his head, and lay down to sleep. And he dreamed. A stairway was set on the ground, and it reached all the way to the sky. Angels of God were going up and going down on it. Then God was right before him, saying, I am God, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. I'm giving the ground on which you are sleeping to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will be as the dust of the earth. They'll stretch from west to east and from north to south. All the families of the earth will bless themselves in you and your descendants. Yes, I'll stay with you. I'll protect you wherever you go. And I'll bring you back to this very ground. I'll stick with you until I've done everything I promised you. Jacob woke up from his sleep. He said, God is in this place, truly, and I didn't even know it. He was terrified. He whispered in awe, incredible, wonderful, holy. This is God's house. This is the gate of heaven. Jacob was up first thing in the morning. He took the stone he had used for his pillow and stood it up as a memorial pillar and poured oil over it. He christened the place Bethel, which means God's house. Let's be honest, Jacob has some baggage. Don't we all, I guess? Tricking his dying father and stealing the birthright from his twin brother leads Jacob to run into the desert as a fugitive fleeing for his life. Jacob's desire to go his own way and grab what isn't his leads to all sorts of painful consequences. And he finds himself alone in a remote part of the desert living somewhere between a conflict-ridden past and an uncertain future. After all this running, Jacob is exhausted. Alone and afraid in the middle of nowhere, Jacob can't go any further and he decides he needs some sleep. And having nothing but the birthright he stole and the clothes on his back, he pulls up a stone for a pillow. It's when Jacob finally stops running that he falls asleep and he begins to dream. Now this is not one of those dreams where your mind just replays the events of your day. This dream is a gift from God. In his dream, Jacob sees a ladder. Not the kind of ladder you have in the garage, but more of a zigzag sidewalk-like ramp that served as a divine link between heaven and earth. Angels and messengers of God are going up and down on this sidewalk, moving between heaven and earth, doing the work of God. And God's message for Jacob in the dream is this, I am God, the God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac. I'm giving you this ground on which you're sleeping. I'm giving it to your descendants too. And your descendants will be as the dust of the earth, They'll stretch from west to east, from north to south. All the families of the earth will bless themselves in you. And I'll stay with you. I'll protect you wherever you go, and I'll bring you back to this very ground. I'll stick with you until I've done everything I promised. The God, who Jacob has never paid any attention to, breaks into his dream. 
He finds him in the middle of nowhere, riddled by sin and fear. And when Jacob leaves his dream state, not only does he awaken from sleep, he wakes up to God. When was the last time you dreamed? Do you even have dreams anymore? When was the last time you woke up to God? And when was the last time that you let your guard down enough to let God in and to listen to what God had to say to you about your life, about your sin even, and about the direction you're headed? Sleeping requires letting our guard down and releasing control to drift off to sleep and finally rest. And it's in this vulnerable dream state that God reminds Jacob that his life is not his own. Jacob has been acting like he calls the shots and like he can get what he wants by grabbing for it. But God has other plans for Jacob. And God has other plans for all of us. First, God reminds Jacob in his dream that although the circumstances of our lives change, God stays the same. God says to Jacob, I am God, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. God is essentially saying, I'm the God who has made covenants and kept promises with all your ancestors who have gone before you, and I am your God too. Whether we recognize God or not, God is still God. Even when we walk away, even when we turn a blind eye, even when we pretend like God isn't there, God is working in us and around us. We're at our very best when we look for God, when we recognize God's work around us, and when we join God in bringing new hope and new life to the world. We were never meant to live just for ourselves. We were never meant to grab what we want at the expense of relationships, communities, and the lives of others. Second, God says to Jacob, I'm giving you the ground on which you're sleeping. It's going to be yours and your descendants. And your descendants will be as many as the dust of the earth. Jacob's greedy actions cut him off from his family, his people, and his land, but they didn't cut him off from God. God breaks into his dream to remind Jacob that although he has broken his relationships and his promises, God will not break relationships or promises. God tells Jacob that he will have a people after all and that Jacob's people will be God's people. God takes what Jacob has broken and stolen and God redeems it. He gives him a second chance, a real opportunity to join in God's work. He allows Jacob to release his selfish ambitions and to give himself over to God. Third, God says to Jacob, all the families of the earth will bless themselves in you and your descendants. God reminds Jacob that these gifts of land and people are not for him to keep to himself. Jacob's purpose now and his actions are not simply to be governed by his own self-interest and self-aggrandizement as they were when he stole his brother's birthright. But now, his life is to be marked by becoming a conduit of God's blessings to others. God really does show up where we least expect it. In the middle of the desert, in the middle of our shame, our grief, and our failure, God shows up to offer a new dream. A dream that is not just about us, but a dream that's for all people throughout all time and everywhere. Jacob's dream wakes him up and he says, God is in this place and I didn't even know it. What place are you in right now? Are you running from God? Have you been grabbing for what you want and what you think you need and in the process alienating yourself from those around you? Or maybe you're living in limbo right now, wondering about the length of this virus reality, wondering if your kids will go back to school in the fall, wondering if all the plans you made for retirement or travel will ever be a possibility again. Of course, wondering what you can possibly do to bring justice in our nation's racial reckoning or how you can even affect the brokenness in our world. 
No matter where you are right now, you're standing at a crossroad, I imagine. Some of us are at the crossroads of failure. Some of us are at the crossroad of broken relationship. And others of us have just been working so hard for our own way that we've forgotten what dreaming with God looks like. Jacob's story reminds us that God is here. God is in the desert, God is at the crossroad, and God shows up in the middle of nowhere. And Jacob's story also reminds us that what we've done in the past and what we've left undone is no match for the love of God. Finally, Jacob's story shows us that we have a call to live up to. We are loved by God, and that love demands a response, and it demands that we share it with the world. Now is the perfect time to look for God in fresh ways. This is the right moment to release your plans and expectations for how your life should go and to allow yourself to be exhausted enough to actually release your own control and allow God to place a new dream in your heart. This is the time to stop looking toward our own self-interest and to instead ask God how we can participate in God's work in the world, work that loves and serves others first. There is so much to be done. Don't get distracted by your own self-interests. Don't steal something that was never yours to begin with. God is speaking, and it's up to us to listen and respond. Amen. stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Good. 
As we come to this time of communion, we do so recognizing that this table, that your home table, that every table is meant to be the most inclusive table in the world because our tables and this table is the table of Christ. So come and taste and see and know the goodness of God and the love of Jesus at this table. Scripture tells us on the night in which Christ's love was made most manifest, he was sharing a meal with his friends and he took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then likewise, he took the cup and Paul tells us this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for all. And every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's life, the life that Christ gave us until he comes again. And that is good news. Let us pray. God, thank you for this bread and this cup. Thank you for this meal that connects us even as we are apart to one another and to believers throughout all of human history. Thank you, God, for this meal that reminds us that you are with us, that your promises will be kept, that we have new life every single day that we can live into. So bless us now as we share this meal. In Jesus' name, amen. And as you eat this bread and drink this cup, may you take it and remind yourself that this is the bread of life and this is the cup of grace. song oh. 
over me Like the way you do Like you always do Sing that song you Please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. Our prayer for you is that in the days to come, you'll listen to God in new and fresh ways and respond to God's call on your life. Please visit our website to find new ways to connect in community through Bible studies, service projects, and family ministry events. Our digital VBS experience called Focus is now on our website and signups are open. And you're also invited to join us for our next pop-up mission event, where we'll be gathering art supplies for 230 elementary students who are a part of Interfaith Outreach Neighborhood Summer Programs. You can sign up to donate or to volunteer on our website for this mission event. We're sending you grace and peace for the coming week. And now, receive the benediction. Go now in the joy of knowing that you have been included. Included at the table. Included at God's table. Included in our common life. Included in the life of God. In the life shared by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's sing, sing, let's sing for joy, for Joy for joy. Go in the joy of knowing that you have been included in the inner life of the God who is love. Go, find joy in telling others that they too are included. May God be gracious to us, and make His face shine down. May God be gracious to us, and make His ways known. Let's sing, let's sing. Go. Find joy in bringing all to God's table. Do not be afraid, for God has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. You are included. May God be gracious to us, make His face shine.